Oh, YouTube is still going live, even though I did that first. Okay, thanks, YouTube. Such a slow poke. Um, so, I got all sorts of things. I, I'm going to very, try very hard to not have a squirrel moment and go off on some sort of any number of tangents that could happen right now. Last week was horrific in our country. And if you haven't heard me talk about trigger stacking, I'm just going to mention it here, but it's not the topic of today's Facebook Live. I would personally say that the entire world, and especially the United States, is completely overwhelmed with trigger stacking right now. And trigger stacking is when you have stressors on your life and then you have a big stressor and then you have another one and another one and another one and another one. And they just, they stack up so that it reduces your ability to cope. And then very often it's this little thing that will set you off like into an, into an irate, whatever. I mean, whatever it is for you, right? So our, our doorknob downstairs is not working right. Every time I come in, it irritates the shit out of me. I just go get another one. I just haven't done it yet, right? I just wanna complain about it to all of you. Okay, let's see. Oh, Marianne, hello from Pittsburgh, and Mary Lou Winchester. Hey, you're a local. Thank you. So just know that there is a very good reality that we are all super trigger stacked right now, even if we don't know it, right? You're, some people say, um, you know, like, uh, Somebody said to me, you know, I have a really long rope, right? Like when we say we're at the end of our rope, I feel like I have a very long rope. But right now I feel like my rope is really short. I feel like my fuse is really short. It's just all this stuff that's so much out of our control. Okay. But as I said, so just take some deep breaths. Do something for you. Maybe that doing something for you does not involve your dog. And I am going to tell you that that is okay. It's always been okay, but it's even more okay today because of all of the stressors that we're probably feeling in one way or another and we can't control. The situation in Washington, COVID, uh, whether you go out to eat or not, I know that I've been really feeling like I need a road trip. Where the hell am I going to go? Right? Like there's just, that doesn't feel safe either. So anyway, just know that you're all probably feeling a little bit trigger stacked. Your fuse is probably very short. And, um, I'm just going to tell you, go for a walk, do something. And maybe that something does not involve your dog, particularly if your dog is reactive, if you're worried about their behavior on leash, just leave them home and go. Yesterday morning we went out, it was Sunday, we went out for a walk around this a local area called Goose Pond and it was sunny and it was bright sky. Um, and you know, it just, it felt good to have like sunshine in my eyeballs. That's all I can tell you. Yesterday felt good to do that. Hey Marianne, yes, absolutely agree about trigger stepping, great. It's a thing and I think you need to be conscious of it and cognizant of it so you can go, okay, like, how can I reduce this? Or just don't just don't add to the pile. Like take some things off your plate if you can. All right. But today I want to talk about behavior as a symptom. So many times people will say to us, um, how do I stop my dog from lunging, barking, jumping, whatever it is? And predominantly, particularly when you're talking about aggression. Behavior is often a symptom of something else. And when you're talking about aggression, the behavior is often a symptom of um, anxiety, fear, overall nervousness. And you've got to wrap your head around the fact that your dog is a living, breathing, emotional being with their own agenda, their own fears, their own likes, their own tastes. Some dogs love tennis balls. Gio could care less about a tennis ball, right? And that, I'm not saying that aggression is okay, but what I'm saying is we need to stop, to start seeing it as a symptom 
of some underlying issue with your dog, some bigger underlying issue with your dog. Because if you just stay focused on my dog is growling at me or my dog is growling at guests that come in or my dog is attacking my other dog or my dog is attacking other dogs on walk. Okay, like all of that sucks. Like, don't I get that. All of that's terrible. But we've got to take a step back and say, what's the sim- like? What's the underlying issue here? What is my dog asking for? If you if you want to think of it that way. Okay, so a dog that is resource guarding from people from you. If you approach your dog, and your dog growls. Your dog is asking for more space. Your dog is asking you to leave them alone to go away. And the question is. Can you do that? Is it life-threatening what the dog has at that moment? If it's not, leave him alone. Gio gets tissues all the time. I don't take them out of his mouth. I could. I don't. doesn't bother me. I let him eat them. They, they poop out. If your dog is um, reacting to people that come into your house, not that anybody's having anybody in their house, but if they were, barking, growling, whatever, what are they asking for? What's the underlying issue? Are they, if they're barking and jumping on them, are they super excited to see them and they're just lost control of their limbs? If they're growling and barking at them, I think they're asking for more space. So I understand that you don't want that to happen. I understand that that is very upsetting, but we also need to recognize, okay, my dog needs more space when people come in my house. Great. Is there a way to give your dog more space? Do you have a crate? Do you have a back room? Do you have a bathroom? Do you have a fenced in yard? Can your dog go out on a tether while people come in? What is it that can help your dog feel better about people entering your home? So it's your home and your dog's home. And I will give you the example that Jubilee, Amy's um, dog was, excuse me, 13 or so now. Uh, does not like it when men enter her space. So anytime I have three daughters, anytime my kids come home with their husbands or fiancés or boyfriends or whoever, um, Jubilee, we just put Jubilee like in this room. And then they come in, everybody sits down. I think I've told you all this before. And then we let her out. She goes over, she sniffs everybody's feet. She could care less. Okay, now that's a real simple solution if that's what it takes, but give it a shot. Because if it works, <laughs> okay, then you don't need to worry so much about things. But... We need to, to see behavior as a symptom of something bigger, something internal in your dog. And then, and really only then, can we start to talk about effective ways to help you and your dog so that you can live a more peaceful, happy life, so that you can start to take your dogs for walks again. Um, and sometimes, you know, I talked to the family over the weekend they have a cute little dog that is just hysterical, literally, about everything. Barking at everything, biting people when they come in. It's gotten worse because now everybody's home working and, um, and it's really driving them nuts, right? They can't get anything done because the dog's barking all the time. And so, you know, the underlying, that's the symptom. All the barking and, and it's, it's a small dog, so it's easily more easily managed, right? But all the barking all the uh, racing at people outside stuff, and the dog cannot recover. So once once he's been um, tipped over, like once his brain has gone to, then he cannot calm down. It goes on and on and on. And then something else happens and it starts again, and then he can't really calm down. And it goes on and on. And, you know, and I said to them, I said, I feel very sorry for your dog, but your dog it sounds like he probably has generalized anxiety disorder, and he thinks that all these things are going to kill him. Now they're not. He's just looking out the window, but he doesn't know that they can't come in here and get them, get him. And so they're going to look at some medication for some some uh, Prozac, some antidepressants that are that work well for dogs with this kind of anxiety issue. But if I had talked to them and just, you know, we talked about some of the things that they could do to reduce the barking in the house until they get this other thing going, um, keeping a leash on the dog would be a simple thing so that he just cannot look out the windows and get all revved up. So that if the son walks downstairs or into the house, the dog cannot charge at him, barking and grabbing at his hands and biting his leg. So a simple thing like a leash inside the house does not fix that dog. It does not solve all of their problems, 
but it would help the dog stop reacting so much. Remember, we just talked about trigger stacking. The dog barks and carries on, and then he does it again and again and again, and that poor dog's cortisol, adrenaline, stress hormones are like, they've got to be off the charts with all of that stress happening every day. And of course, we know that these things are not going to harm the dog, but that doesn't matter. It's really irrelevant because your dog doesn't know that those things um, aren't going to kill him. So that is that is really the important piece of that. So I'd like you to start thinking about your dog's behavior. What is it? Two, I guess two questions you can ask yourself. What is it a symptom of? What is my dog asking for? Your dog is communicating with you all the time. Like when your dog yawns, they're not tired, they're stressed. And you have to take it in the context that they're in. A full body shake off is a stress reliever, reducer. So if, if two dogs have met and it seems like it's gonna go okay or whatever, and then one dog steps away and shakes off, whoo, say, oh, all right, well, that was a little more stressful than I had anticipated, than I had even thought it was. I didn't think my dog was stressed out at all. I think we think that our dogs are happy and um, relaxed all the time if they're if they're not growling. If they're doing, there's but guys, there's more to there's more to dog communication than just growling. All right, so that's your challenge. That's your little message for me today. I'd like you to start to see. Hey guys, I see that lots of you is lots of views. Well, that's good English. Lots of you are on. Give me a thumbs up. Tell me where you're look, listening in from. I'd love to know who I'm talking to. Um, I want you to start to see your dog's behavior as a symptom. <clears throat> Let's talk about some easier ones to think about. Okay. When, uh, if you have a dog that is scratching at their ear, say they're always scratching at their left ear, or suddenly they start to scratch at their left ear. You could spend a lot of time getting them, you know, stop doing that, taking their foot away, stop scratching at your ear, blah, blah, blah. But I think it's not going to be a, uh, a total shocker for anybody here. But scratching at the ear is a symptom of something going on inside the ear, internally in the ear. Wow. See that? So, um, hey, Joanne, thanks for joining us from Virginia. Um we, right, so scratching at the ear, maybe the dog is a scratching, but if it's going on, the dog's making a lot of noise, we're going to take a peek inside the ear and go, oh, you've got a bunch of goop or yeast or whatever, and you're going to take care of that, okay? If your dog starts obsessively licking their paw or whatever and is getting, I'm not, I'm not, a, I know, there's no, hang on. Oh, we're down to the hot dogs on top of the camera. One more. If your dog is obsessively licking their paw, and to the point where they're it's raw or they're getting a hot spot, you're gonna, yes, we're gonna do some get some medication about that, but we're also gonna say, why is my dog doing that? Like what what is it that's happening? Are is he stressed out? Does he have an allergy? Um, I don't know, right? So, but you would take a look, allergies would be an internal thing. Stress would be an internal thing. Maybe you use use a new cleaner or something that's affecting your dog. I don't know what it would be, but you would start to look other places. You wouldn't just get, oh, we got to stop him from licking his foot. Oh, we've got to stop him from licking his foot. Yes, you would. But you would also say, what's causing this? Why is my dog licking his foot? Okay. It's the same thing, you know, um, people like, you know, kids in particular, can have all kinds of crazy behavior that we just want them to stop doing it. But we have to look internally, like what is the child asking for? What is the cause? Are they overtired? Are they super hungry? Are they stressed out? Are they afraid? Are they worried? Are they overwhelmed, right? Be children's behavior is a symptom of something else just as like it is with our dogs. I had three daughters. I feel like I can say that. Okay. So I want you to, I'd love to have you put it in the comments, wherever you're listening from. What is some of the behavior? Just pick one behavior that your dog um, is doing that's annoying. And let's start flushing out what is your dog asking for? What, what's that a symptom of?
Okay. Now, a couple of things. I also told you last week that on Tuesday, January 26th at 7 p.m. Eastern time, we are having a webinar. It is not free. It will be a paid for webinar. It'll be an hour, an hour and a half. And I'm super excited about it. We haven't put anything out. No emails have gone out. No signups are available yet. I just want to keep telling you about it. Mark your calendar. If you want to make sure you're on the list, you can, you can message me. You can post it here in the comments and we will be sure to get you tagged in our system as um, interested in that in that webinar we there will be other free things we always offer free things that's part of what we do but but not this particular series we and as i said before we really want to work with people that are interested in hearing about the science that are interested in learning um interested in learning about their dog and really how to help their dog they're not just trying to glean you know tidbits from some free stuff these are gonna, it's gonna be a series. There'll be a, a webinar every two weeks. Uh, I believe there's four all together. So you can buy them individually. You can buy a packet, you can get all four, which means you've only paid for three and you get the fourth one for you. But regardless, you will start to get information on that. We will definitely post it in all the places, on the, all the socials, all the Facebook as well, so that you will uh, be aware of that. Paces in the evening. Oh, interesting, Marianne. I, is your dog a senior dog? Because that sounds like a senior dog issue where they get restless in the evening in pieces. Um, it's not a senior dog. Maybe think about an extra outing outside for a potty break again, but my gut says senior dog and that could be uh, other things. So I would put a leash on them and just don't let them pace unless it's, unless it means the dog has to go to the bathroom. Okay. All right, you guys, I will see you next week. Fingers crossed. I guess fingers crossed that I will be able to talk to you next week, but my daughter Rachel is expecting a baby. Her due date was yesterday. So any day now, and I will be down there helping her in Connecticut when that happens. So it seems like I should be able to cut away for a 15, 20 minute Facebook live next Monday, but we'll post something in all the places to let you know if it's gonna happen or not. Um, we'll let you know if it's not gonna happen. If you don't uh, see anything, I will be on at noon. Let's see, past week, Mac has started running away from his food dish. Wow. Bizarre, Mary Lou, running away. I'd love to see a video of that. If you want to post it to the page. So I, it, before I sign off, what it sounds like is something, your dog has made an association with the food dish. <laughs> Granny, ah, Mary Lou, stop it. <laughs> my first grandchild, I'm super excited, but I don't know what I want my grandmother word to be yet. So we're hanging in there. Um, it sounds like something he something scared him and he made the association with the food dish. So try a different dish. If you are using a metal dish, try a plastic dish. Try one of your dishes. Put a little food on the floor if you don't have more than one dog. Um, but suss out whether it's the dish, the food, the location. But it, it definitely sounds like something happened, you may not even be aware of it, that frightened him and he made that association with his dish, which is pretty funny but weird also. All right, you guys, I will see you next week. Over and out, deep breaths, do something for yourself. Even if that means leaving the dog home, leave the dog home. But we're all super trigger stacked, probably including your dog. And we all need a break and just to take some breaths and take care of ourselves. So I'll see you next week. Have a good week. And let's hope it's better than last week worldwide. Bye, YouTube.